Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can your Sheikh communicate with you without the use of technology such as mind to mind? If this is possible, how can you distinguish the Sheikh's message from that of your ego or shaitan? That is a very good question. I am really confused with this. Yes. Well, number one, we should not get confused with this. The Sheikh is a guide, he's a teacher. And the Sheikh is that one who has been given ijazah, the permission, the authority, and he has been trained to reach to people. In reality, the Sheikh is that one who is representing the Holy Prophet. There are different levels of Sheikhs, we're not going to go into that too much. But if we're talking about a Sheikh who is a guide, who is guiding people, Guiding us from what? No, not from a small house to a bigger house. <laughs> not from uh, little money to big money. But he's guiding us from dunya to maula. From here to the hereafter. In the best road, in the cleanest road, clearest road, because there are shaitans everywhere to pull us out and to reach us to the highest stations. So, the sheh is that one who is guiding us. He's representing he is an inheritor of the Prophet. He has been trained. He has so much lineage coming from him too. And he's chosen to do it. Not everyone can declare themselves to be. It is not. Just as you cannot declare yourself to be a doctor, no matter how much you learn by yourself, no matter how many books that you read, you have to be trained by a veritable school. And the higher school that you go to, the more recognized, the more prestige you're going to get, and the more knowledge you're supposed to have. So, in the same way, these tariqats, 41 major tariqats and hundreds of subdivisions from here. All of them are teaching people how to bring ourselves from this world to the afterlife. And it is a very long, it's a very heavy, it is a very serious journey. It's not an easy journey. If the, prof, if the sheikh is the inheritor of the prophetic knowledge, that sheikh is receiving from his sheikh is receiving from his sheh before. He has to have an unbroken lineage of 1400 years, reaching all the way to the Holy Prophet The sheh uses technology, but not this technology. The sheh that one way or another, they have to be also connected either by blood or spiritually, to Ahlil Bayt. That Shaykh now, he has a technology that he has been trained and to use, but not this kind of Western technology in which we go to the roots of it too. Western technology takes so much from the East. So many kinds of knowledges they took from the East. And the East, the bedrock, the foundation of knowledge that the West took happens to be from Islamic lands that we took, we filtered, we refined, and they took, and from that, they spread. Just to give you an example, Islam was in Spain for 800 years, when the Reconquistadors, the Christians, they took over the land, and they destroyed, say, 99% of the Islamic civilization. 800 years of Islam. That, another thing that Muslims should think about. Is this a blessing or is this a curse? Is this a punishment or is this a reward? And if we do something that Allah is going to punish, what is it that we did? We have to find out. That's the only time when we're going to get better. Like the Ummah is under punishment now. But with that 1% that is left of the Islamic civilization, the Spanish took it and they became the most powerful, the most enlightened nation in the whole of Europe. Muslims had that. Muslims, they have lost it. That's another subject. So, the shaykhs now, the technology that they use is the technology of the spirit. Right now, we are sitting here and we're using our five senses, physical. So I'm not even using all five senses. Our spirit is inside the senses, the body, the physical self. Those ones who have been trained and they've sacrificed themselves, the spirit is outside. 
and the body is inside. That's the time when the spirit now, he is not going to be slave to the five senses. He is not going to be slave to the laws of time or place. We all understand this. We know that the world of the senses is not the only world. There are so many other worlds. Awliya Allah, from that time, they say there are 18,000 at least universes with their own laws and their own systems and their own everything. That Awliya Allah, that friend of Allah, because he has sacrificed himself, because he has sacrificed himself like Ismail alayhi salam, he has sacrificed his ego, and his ego now is just following the will of Allah. This is not easy. It is through very hard training for years and years and years. It's not easy to become a doctor. You think it's easy to become a doctor of the heart? To be a friend of Allah? That's why there are special schools. There must be special schools, special places where they are going to train us to become this. And these sheikhs, these are the trainers. And once they have completely finished themselves, this is what we call fana, in order to disappear into the oceans of Allah, First, you have to disappear into the ocean of the Holy Prophet, because that is the divine protocol. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's not complete if you just say La ilaha illallah. Yahudis also say La ilaha illallah. But the religion is not complete. Also, you cannot make Muhammad Rasulullah to be a religion. Never in 1400 years you see any Muslim worshipping Holy Prophet. Ever we hear? Saying that he is Allah. Never. No matter how much we love him, we celebrate him, we put him on top. Never, because... It is clear. Now, for the complete religion, you have to have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Our recognition of Allah is negating ourselves, cancelling ourselves. We begin, we don't say, there is Allah. We say, there is no ilahs. La ilaha illallah, except for Allah. There is no existence. There is no reality. In reality, this is nothing. The world of the senses is just an illusion. Every spiritual tradition, every religion also is saying the same thing. With Islam, it is saying the same thing too. And it is more complete. Islam is an ocean. Anything that you put in there, any idea is going to sink into that ocean. But Muslims, we have lost. We have lost this tradition of coming into this ocean and disappearing into this ocean. Fana fi Allah. We have to have fana fi Rasul. But in order to reach the Holy Prophet, we have to have connection to his inheritor because he lived 1400 years ago. And we are still here physically. Holy Prophet is still here spiritually, not physically. Spiritually, he is here, he is there, he is everywhere because he is a prophet of the alams. How can you be a prophet of the alams and you live only for 63 years and then you completely disappear like the Wahhabis, they are saying, he's just a dead man. Why are you praying to a dead man? And our kalimat is shahadat. Why we have to say Muhammad Rasulullah, when he is a just a man who came and he left and he's finished? I'm not going to believe a prophet that is dead. I'm going to believe in a prophet that is alive. Fresh and alive. In his grave, that is what Quran is saying. Don't think that those who are slain in the way of Allah, that they are dead. But they are fresh and alive in their graves. Holy Prophet is slain in the way of Allah. Awliya Allah, who are trained by the inheritors of the Holy Prophet, they said to Islam, one way or another, they are slain in the way of Allah. Tariqat is teaching you first how to slay your ego. Your ego. Once you do that, then you're going to remove the 70,000 veils between you and Allah. Different tariqats, they have different ways of lifting it. In a Naqshbandi way, Tariqatul Aliyah. We don't remove the veil that is close to us. The other Tariqat, they remove veils that are close to you. So you see, you make progress and you start moving away from this physical dimension and you start understanding the different worlds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and you move. Then you start moving, you start moving, you start moving, but there is a danger in that because you can get lost. There is a danger in that because you can get swayed. There is a danger in that because you can get drunk. Naqshbandi Tariqat is removing the veils from Allah. The last seven breaths of the murid, before he passes, the shaykh will then remove the veils that is closest to him. He sees the station that he has reached. Immediately, angel of death comes. Go to the other side clean. 
because all the zikr, everything that we're doing, it is to make us to remove the veils, but it is a credit. It's credit. Yeah? Don't use the credit in unnecessary ways. When are we going to use the credit? Only on the judgment day. Judgment day, then to use the blessings. For what? Not for cars, not for houses, not for dunya, but for ahirat. In the Naqshbandi way, it's not even for us. It is for others, to help others who are in trouble, to pull them out from the mess. So, the Shaykh then uses that technology, what is called keramats. Keramats, they are not mu'jizat. In English, you just say miracle, but there's a difference. Miracle of the Prophet, it is different. Miracle of Allah, it is different. There's difference between mu'jizat and difference between karamat. Those ones who are representing the Prophets, they must have, this is one of the signs that you're in Allah. you must have a mu'jizat. You must be able to do extraordinary things. You must do things that is contrary to the laws of nature. Loss of time and space. There is time within time and space within space. They are doing that not for show. Because the sheikhs, when they do that, they show it, they also use up their credit. No nation is punished until they have used up their credit. The prophets came, and with all their worshipping and closest to Allah, they opened mujizat after mujizat, miracle after miracle, to make the nation to wake up Nations still sleeping, that's when the punishment becomes. But Holy Prophet said to us, he did not build this religion on miracles. He built it on intelligence, on sincerity, on ihsan, on intelligence, on sweat and blood. So, we have to follow the sunnah. This is the understanding also of the sunnah. Not just external, but the sunnah of something that is pure, that is the way of the Holy Prophet salam, that he has left to his inheritors, he has left to his Ahlul Bayt, that he has left to all those ones who are connected to him. Now that's the time you don't make distinction to people too. You're going to say, come, you have sincerity, you don't know too much, it's okay. You have sincerity, it's easy that time. You're doing too much, but you have arrogance. Very hard to remove that. Only fire can remove that if you're not removing it now. You're doing a lot, you're going to hajj, you're going to do everything, you're going to make zikr even, you still cannot control your anger. Someone touches you a little bit, you're ready to destroy this whole world with that anger. You're in big trouble because the fire is waiting to remove that anger if you don't remove it here. Tarikatul Aliyah, this Naqshbandi way, like what it is said, the end of their way, so 40 tarikat, is the beginning of ours. Because now, You've done everything, you start from scratch, you start from yourself, you start now. Now it is not a matter of tilawat, it's not a matter of worship, it's not even a matter, this tariqat is not based on zikr too. We do zikr, yes, but it's not based on that. It is sohbet, association, because association is going to teach you about yourself. If you know yourself, you know your Lord. You can do everything, but you don't know your Lord, then you're not worshipping. You think you're worshipping, but you're making another ilah. Now we're getting into more deeper into the deen, more deeper into the religion. The technology that they have is this mu'jizat. They can communicate, of course they can. Awliya Allah, the inheritors of the Prophet. Holy Prophet is saying, my inheritors, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. They can do miracles that the Bani Israel, the prophets of the Bani Israel did. My inheritors, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. <laughs> One time, to give you an example, there was a Christian and a Muslim. This was in Baghdad. During the time of Hazrati uh, Shia Abdul Qadir Jilani, Qadazullah Sir, so King Sa'id's worthy saint, living at that time. And one Christian said to one of his murids, he say, you're saying that Prophet Allah said to a salam, you're saying that your Prophet is higher than Jesus. He says, but your prophet never raised anyone from the dead. Jesus did. Now, big question mark there. The murid, getting a little bit upset, a little bit confused, doesn't know what to do. He went to his shah. And he's saying to his shah, 
You're saying this is what the Christians say and I'm finding, I'm looking and it is true. Which, that knowledge is also limited because Holy Prophet did. Not only Holy Prophet, Sahib e Kiram did. <laughs> a story within a story. After a war, one time, the Sahibis, they were coming back from the battlefield and they were walking. Okay? They were walking, they were entering into the town and at the doorway of the town, in the gate, there was an old woman that she had her son in the battle, in the war. The only son that is taken care of. So, all the Sahibis, they came and she kept asking, how is my son and how is my son? Where is my son? Have you seen my son? But her son was Shahid. Passed. Nobody wanted to break her heart, so they did not say anything. Last people to come now. Holy Prophet Islam was not there. Hazrat Ali came through the door. He says, Ya Ali, have you seen my son? Is he okay? Is he still alive? Hazrat Ali looked at her and he looked back. He did not say anything. Then Hazrat Usman came behind him. She said, Ya um, Usman, have you seen my son? Hazrat Usman knew her son is dead, did not want to break her heart. Look behind. And Hazrat Umar came. And she asked, Ya Umar, have you seen my son? Hazrat Umar did the same thing too, did not say anything, because he understood what was going on. And he turned, and he was Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu an. And she said, Ya Abu Bakr, where is my son? Is he alive? There was no one behind Hazrat Abu Bakr. Hazrat Abu Bakr took his beard and put it in his mouth, not speaking. He says, Ya Allah, because he knew he has to break this news to her. Before he finished it, he heard a voice coming up from behind him and saying, Oh my mother, here I am. And the Sahabe Kiram was running. He was raised from the dead. That news reached to the Holy Prophet والسلام, and Jibril والسلام, came and said to the Holy Prophet, if Hazrat Abu Bakr at that time, if he wished for the whole of everyone who had died in that war to come up from the grave, he could have. Hazrati Abu Qadir Jilani, he said, bring that Christian and you come to the cemetery now. And we will see. So they came to the cemetery. This is true. This is real. This is not a story. Came to the cemetery. And the Christian says, Ya Abdul Qadir, Jesus can raise from the dead. Therefore he is God. Asha Astaghfirullah. Even your prophet cannot do that. Hazrat Abu Qadir Jalani smiled at him and said, In the name of Muhammad, not in the name of Allah, in the name of the Holy Prophet, rise from the grave. And every grave started shivering and shaking and the dead came back again. Then he said, go back, because now is not the time yet. They were ready, because they said, is it the time now? Ready for what? Armageddon. Ready for the time of what? Dajjal. Which we are entering into the time of Dajjal. We are in that time. They say, is this the time for us? He says, no. Go back. It is not the time yet. And they went back. The Christian started shaking, kissing the feet of Hazrat Abu Bakr, uh, Hazrat Abdul Qadir Jalani. So many miracles, so many saints that they did. It's not only in that time. There are saints still living right now and they are still making miracles right now. But the Ummah doesn't believe. They are pulling themselves out because the Ummah doesn't want to go to greet them, to be sitting in their associations. In the old days, we all know, especially if you are strongly Ahli Sunnat Akhidah, you know your grandfathers, your great-grandfathers, you know people in your own family who is able to do unusual things, correct? Where are they now? Dunya. Because of Hubbub Dunya. You are putting a veil there. Once you put a veil there, then you're going to be a slave to the five senses. You're not going to understand the senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to our spirit. Hazrat Umar, he was giving a hutbah, Juma, and he's able to see what was happening in a war. And in that hutbah, he's saying, Ya Sariya, look to the mountains. There was another Sahabi, he was involved in a Ghazi. And in a war, in a holy war, 
And he says, look to the mountains. They were thousands of miles away. The Sahabi Kiram came back and he said, yes, I heard you, Ya Umar. You were warning, I heard your voice clearly to say, look to the mountains. The Shah uses the kind, of oh, the kind of technology they have. He's going to put out the whole of technology of this world in a thousand worlds like this. Hazrat Rumi is saying, if man understands the light that Allah has put in us, if that light were to show itself, it will put out a thousand suns. Where is that light? Veils. We are veiled. We are veiled. The shaykhs, the tariqats, Allah, they say, remove that veil. You're not meant for here. You are Ahsani Taqweem. You're not meant for here. Your home is in Jannat. But your originality is beyond that too. Allah, they're not worshipping to go to Jannat. They're worshipping for the face of Allah. They're worshipping for the sake of Allah. That time it doesn't matter to them whether it's paradise or it's hell. Because they say, I'm not making business with you, Ya Rabbi. I'm not making business with you. I'm not praying to say, if I pray this much, I'm going to get this much reward. I'm praying because I want you to be pleased. That is ashk. That is love. Love is not asking for any reward. It's only looking at the beloved one and that beloved one is happy and that is reward enough. The shaykhs, they are teaching that, not scholars. So, the inheritors of the prophets, they have that kind of technology, remote control. Even now, even if there is no internet, and now, right now we're having a live broadcast, this is just something that Chef Andy has put for other murids from all over the world that they want to physically hear the sohbat from China and Peru, India and Singapore and different areas. They are listening and they're taking something from it. But even if there is no technology, there is that spiritual technology and the Sheikh is going to send through the heart. That is what is meant. When Jibril salam came and said, read, the Holy Prophet said, I don't know how to read. Read, read in the name of your Lord. Squeezing him, passing that knowledge from heart to heart. In this way of the Naqshbandi way, it is passing from heart to heart. Because Holy Prophet is saying, what Allah has put into my heart, I pour into the heart of Abu Bakr. Every knowledge that came, pour into the heart of Abu Bakr. That's why the end of their way is the beginning of ours, because it is a prophetic tradition. Prophetic tradition is to bring people away from this dunya to Mawla. It's nothing else. It's not promising people the dunya. It's not telling people how to live in this dunya. It's making them to understand that this is something that they're just passing through. That the reality is there and to connect ourselves to that reality. So, how are we going to connect to your share? That is an important question, isn't it? How are we going to connect to Allah? If you remember Allah. Because you can pray, but you see Allahu Akbar, your heart is circling everywhere except thinking about Allah. You're not connecting to Allah. You can even make zikr and say Allah, 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 but if your heart is circling somewhere else, you're not connected to Him. But at least zikrullah, when you say Allah, 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 and you force yourself just for that time to remember Allah, then Allah is going to remember us. The connection is made. The connection is made. How are you going to remember the Prophet? Salawat. Every salawat that you make to the Holy Prophet, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa Sayyidina Muhammad. There is an angel, Holy Prophet is saying, that takes this salawat, the greeting, and the angel goes to the cover of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, and he's saying, Ya Rasulullah, from the son of this, who is the son of this, who is the son of this, who is this living here, is sending salams to you. And Prophet says, send him ten of my salams. Once you start doing that, other things will start shifting inside of you. You start seeing things different. You start hearing things different. You start saying, then I must please my Prophet. How are you going to remember your Shaykh? Remember him. Listen. Understand. Apply that knowledge. Not only when you're in trouble, you're going to start connecting to him. In your everyday life, you must connect to him. That is what is called a rabita. A rabita is connecting yourself to your uh, Shaykh. Yes, he is a man. Of course he is a man. 
But he is a man unlike other men. Just as Holy Prophet والسلام, is a man unlike other men. He is still a creature. We don't worship him. Of course we don't. People are not understanding this. They're very, I'm surprised, highly intelligent people. They're not understanding basics. For example, they say, why are you having pictures? Isn't pictures haram? But the same person who has pictures has his own photo ID. Isn't it? His own pictures of himself and others in his house. At the very least, everyone has a television in their house. And that's even worse. That's moving pictures. So, now you need a share now to balance things. This is necessary especially for now because man has fallen into a situation when their senses are more vulgar, they're more uh, tight holding on to themselves than animals. So you have to fight that kind of situation with this. Everywhere you turn, you come out, nothing is reminding you of Allah. People are not even believing that malls and shopping centers, they're filled with shaitans. But Holy Prophet was saying that over and over again. This now, Holy Prophet is saying, when you look, there are some men, when you look at them, they will remind you of Allah. And these are the ones that we call shaykhs in awliyaullah. When we look at them, they're not reminding us of anything except Allah. And when they, we look at them and they say, come, follow me, they don't say, come, be with me and stay where we are. They say, come, follow me, I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to take you there. You cannot go by yourself. No man, without any vehicle, without any intention, without any intelligence, without any knowledge can move from point A to point B. He needs something. There is something there. There is a map. There is a car. There is a phone call. There are people taking us from point to point. From us to Allah, they're saying, no, you can reach directly. That is not divine protocol. You cannot. And Allah is saying, you cannot. Seek means to come close to me. I am closer to you than my jugular vein. Call me and I will be there. But be sincere. When you're calling Allah, what is in our heart? Whatever that is in our heart is going to show. So, yes, the Shaykh may reach to you as much as you are following and consulting and taking your Shaykh Sohbat, his advice and putting it in your life and being in a Jamaat, that time you're not going to get confused. It's okay. This kind of question, it comes every time. Of course it does. Especially if you're slowly just coming into tariqat, you're going to say so many voices. Yes, it is. Our heart is like a radio. There's so many stations. Allah is speaking to us all the time. Prophet is speaking to us right now. The angels are whispering something. Shaitans are whispering something. Our ego is whispering something. Now, how are you going to tell that apart? Because now there's a lot of static on our radio. To be with a guide, with a mushit, they're going to slowly tune it and they're going to say this is not the station of Allah you think it is it's a station of your ego they're going to tune to another station this is another station this is another station this is a station of your shaykh this is a station of the angels but start from humble start from the very bottom don't go all the way to the top because that shows arrogance too first understand if it's coming from shaitan or not that's the time when muraqaba that is the time when tafakur there is a time when meditation, it is very important. That much time that a man sits down and makes tafakur, meditation, which Holy Prophet is saying, one hour of meditation is better than 70 years of worship. 70 years of worship. Then you're going to sit down. What is this meditation? Not meditation the way that they're teaching now, mixing everything up. Islamic meditation is not to sit so proud and to... No, no, that's not meditation. To sit... Disconnect yourself from everything and say, Ya Rabbi, it is now only me and you. Look at your life. Look at your day. Look at your week. Look at your month. Look at your life and try to understand why did you live today? For what reason did you live today? Be sincere because a lot of people, they are in routine and you can say, yeah, I'm living for Allah. But no, did you wake up? The first thing that is popping in your mind is Allah and His Prophet. The first thing that comes to your mind is to say Shahadat. Or first thing that comes to our mind is what do I have to do today? I have to run this, I have to go to the shower. To... 
Now that's a time you're making tafakur. That is a time when you are meditating. That's a time when you're judging yourself. That's the time when you're cleaning and making everything clean and pure. And you know, that's a time you don't really need too many people telling you. You become honest. You become sincere. Then, you're going to say, I speak here. It was for my ego. I speak here because I'm upset and I'm angry and I'm not able to control it. If you're something good that you do, you say, Ya Rabbi, shukur, alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, alhamdulillah. Then that uh, zikr, that alhamdulillah is sincere. It means more than making thousands in ghaflat. Because now you know the reason. And that astaghfirullah that we're making is not the astaghfirullah that Rabbatul Adawiyah is saying. For every astaghfirullah we make, we have to make another astaghfirullah. Because the astaghfirullah we're making is in ghaflat. Then you're going to sit and you're going to say, I did this wrong today. I did this for my ego. I did this for shaitan. I re- forgot about my Lord this time. Then you can say, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabbi. Astaghfirullah. That Astaghfirullah means something. The more that happens, the more light is going to enter. The cleaner your heart is going to be. That's the time now when you make that tafakur and you're taking the teachings of your Shaykh, which are the teachings of the Holy Prophet, that Allah has sent to us. The more you're doing that, then you're going to connect yourself easier to your Shaykh. more you are going to be in the Jama'at, more than you're going to be able to place yourself and know, okay, I'm here at this time, I wish to be there. This one is uh, going through this kind of experience, it's kind of like mine. You can rub against each other and polish each other. Tariqat is not to make everyone to be uniform also, not everyone to dress alike, no. The beauty is in its own uniqueness. The beauty of a mountain is every tree is growing in its own way. If everything is uniform, there is a, an ugliness in there, an unnaturalness. Then once you start doing that, it will be easier then for you to understand this is coming from my Shaykh because you're just going to consult not only with your Shaykh spiritually but those ones that he has assigned, those ones who are representing him, those ones that you are close to, those ones that are in the Jamaat. So that's a time when your Shaykh's teachings and his karamat will reach you. It doesn't matter if you're here and you're somewhere else. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he went all the way to Central Asia without knowing the language. He's able to make the whole tribes of Central Asia, they're strong, the strongest, most warrior-like people in the world to accept Islam because of the light of the Holy Prophet said to Islam. Not because of this technology, not because of books, not because of classes that he went to, not because of wealth. No, it is the light. How are you going to get that light as much as you dispel the darkness from your heart that is crowding your heart because of the ego, because of shaitan, because of this dunya, because of your desires, then that light is going to enter. Then that's the time, yes, you're going to say, I sacrifice myself for my Allah, for my Prophet, for my Shaykh, for this way. Guide us. Guide us. But in these days, people are placing too much emphasis on zahir knowledge. Wrong time, wrong place wrong era and the sickness that is afflicting us in the ummah it is not physical it is spiritual physically there's never been more muslims than ever in human history we have the we have all the resources and the wealth we have technology too but we have lost we have no head and we are under the boots of the unbelievers because we fell in love with the world. This is something I didn't say this. Our Shaykh didn't say this. Our Holy Prophet said this. It is because of Hubub Dunya. May Allah uh, keep us away from this kind of things and make us to understand ourselves to live only for the sake of Allah, inshaAllah.